Now to a local 12 exclusive about an all-American baseball player who died of cancer. Tonight, that boy's father claims the leukemia that killed his son was caused by radiation that drifted from a nearby plant once used to process uranium for nuclear bombs. Dwayne Pullman begins his investigation into that plant by examining Zach Farmer's life and death. Zach Farmer was the kind of kid you love. He always wanted to give back. A gifted southpaw. He just lived to be on the mound. And three-time All-American. You don't see that very often in Pike County, Ohio, do you? No, not, not like that. Zach was legendary, playing on this field in Piketon, honored to this day right out front when you enter the stadium. His dad, Larry, coached him. I could feel him when he was playing, you know, me coaching a little bit. You know, like so many others, Larry watched in awe. And you're watching him as a dad live his dream. Oh, absolutely. Best thing in the world. Zach could have gone straight to the minor leagues. Instead, he chose to be a Buckeye. And he just liked Ohio State. He was on his way to greatness there, too. When in April of 2014, Zach got sick. He had flu-like symptoms. It wasn't the flu. Acute myeloid uh, leukemia. Yeah. AML, an aggressive cancer that often kills in months. The diagnosis was devastating. He pulled the cover up over his head. Tough day. That was a tough time. You reliving it? That's hard. Zach was just 19 years old. Now he was facing a cancer that usually strikes someone in their 60s. His dad thought that was odd. It is odd to the doctors, too. Even stranger, the National Cancer Institute states exposure to radiation is one of the leading causes of adult AML. Larry Farmer began to think about his family's home, which was right next to this U.S. government fence that wraps around this. The Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant, a 3,400-acre compound containing massive buildings designed for one purpose, making enriched uranium, most of it for building up America's nuclear arsenal. In the production of uranium-235 for military use and defense of our way of life. Built in 1952 and closed in 2000, this plant is one of the largest facilities of its kind in the world. Here, enormous amounts of uranium were processed for weapons and later for fuel in reactors. Now, according to the National Conference of State Legislatures, 2.2 million tons of hazardous waste is stored here, including 21,000 metal cylinders containing depleted uranium hexafluoride. In all, 415 facilities and structures on this site are contaminated. And a little more than a mile away on the southeast side where the wind blows. Absolutely. Is that home where Larry raised Zach and the rest of the family? Uh, we lived in a hot spot. A radioactive hotspot. Absolutely. This air quality monitor across the street from Zahn's Corner Middle School is four miles from the plant. In 2017, the monitor picked up Neptunium-237 and in 2018, Americium-241. Both are known cancer causers. The U.S. Department of Energy, or DOE, which oversees the plant and the monitor, disclosed those findings last year. After additional tests revealed enriched uranium inside the school, Zahn's Corner was closed in May of last year. In response to our questions, a spokesperson at DOE's Portsmouth Paducah Project Office wrote to me, stating there is no radioactivity detected above naturally occurring levels, insisting there is no public health or safety risk from radioactive material preventing Zahn's Corner Middle School from opening. The school district's superintendent says the school board made the right decision to close Zahn's Corner. DOE said it was fine. Well, DOE still says it's fine. It, it's not fine. Any level of radiation, in my mind, um, is not something that's suitable for children. Larry Farmer's family home was four times closer to the plant than Zahn's Corner Middle School. I blame myself for living there. He says his son talked to him about that. We probably lived in the wrong place. He said that? Sure. You moved from there? Yeah. Why? I never really moved back in after Zach was diagnosed. 
Zach endured agonizing treatments. Yeah, I seen him crying. And never seen him cry. Battling to make it back to the mound. That's all he wanted to do. Just get back and play the game. Get back and play the game. Yeah. And for a brief moment, it looked like he would. The cancer was in remission. But in 2015, the cancer came back. Yeah. Within weeks, a doctor delivered tragic news. And she just said, Zach, you're, it's got you. I imagine you cried together. Yeah. Zach Farmer died at 757 on the morning of August 4th, 2015. His father lost more than a son. That was my best friend. Now Larry Farmer looks out over his new property, many miles away from the house where he and Zach once called home. Zach Farmer lost his life to leukemia, but his father believes what caused his son's cancer was drifting in from that plant right next door. What killed your son? Uh, the waste off his A plant. The Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant. Sure, it's, that's, my, that's what I think. So you believe the government's responsible for the death of your son? Yeah. The U.S. Department of Energy did not answer my direct questions about Larry Farmer's claims, but in its statement says, radioactive elements picked up by all air monitors on and around the Portsmouth site are below limits set by state and federal environmental laws. You can read DOE's complete response on local12.com. Next week, parents grieve the loss of another child to another cancer. And the father of a young girl who died is a key person who voted to close that school. My local 12 investigation, Drifting Death, continues Monday night, live at 11. I'm Dwayne Pullman. I'll see you then.